Hey guys, Quinn from Canada. The spreadsheet tutorial won the poll. This is one you don't want to miss. It's an awesome feature in FreeCAD. Let's get at it. Whenever I work with spreadsheets, this is how I like to start. You create your new document. Then the first thing I do is I go to my spreadsheet workbench and I create a new spreadsheet. And the default name for it is just spreadsheet. Next thing I do is go to my part design, create a new body. And once I have my body and my spreadsheet, I'll double click on the spreadsheet itself. Then I'll go to my start page. I'll delete the start page and then go back to my document. Once I'm done that, I'll go to window tile and I'll get my window here for my drawing and I'll get my spreadsheet on the right hand side. Whenever you tile things, whatever one you're actively on, that's the one that appears on the left. Then I'll just make it a little bit smaller here to match the size because I don't like to have my spreadsheet open all the way. Let's make some few variables up. So we'll go X, Y, and we'll go Z. In here, let's go 20, 30, and we'll go 10. So now let's go top, create new sketch. Don't worry if I'm going too fast. This will all make sense soon. And now I'm just going to make a box. And you know what? Because I like to have my boxes centered, I'm just going to use the trick that I showed you in a constraints tutorial. Click on the equal constraint, click one end here, click the other end here, and click the middle. And look at that. We are all centered up. So now let's give it an X coordinate right here. In order to use this coordinate here in the spreadsheet, what you want to do is click the function button right here. Now type spreadsheet. And it's good because it's going to predictively guess what you're doing. So click spreadsheet right there. And our X coordinate is located at B1. So you can say B1. And right there, your value will come up there right here. See, result 20. Go OK. Go OK. And now let's make a vertical here. So we'll make this line length right here. And if we you go back into it, same thing. You can go spreadsheet. Click OK. And you want to go B2 and click OK and it's 30. If you close this sketch up right now, if I change one of these variables, let's say I double this to 40, you will see this change. This changes to 20. See, it changes. If I'm in my sketch, however, and I choose to make this 40 and I click enter, nothing will happen. So this got me for a long time when I first started with FreeCAD. But once you close the sketch, it will automatically update. I don't actually like doing this, believe it or not, but I just wanted to teach you that it's possible. This doesn't actually tell me anything. I mean, I don't want to cross reference these things every time. So what you can do is you can actually give this an alias. So if I click here and I click on the alias, I'm going to say X and I'm going to hit enter. And you'll notice that this went yellow. So now, I can refer to it by a name instead of a column. So if I click on this guy here, click on the function, instead of saying B1, I'm going to say X. Now, check this out. It gives me a preview because it guesses I want X, but it says property X not found. That's because it is case sensitive. So capital X is not the same as lowercase X, but it did guess it here in a predictive search that I wanted a capital X and look, now that we have a capital X there, it's 40, which is that guy right there. Click OK. Click OK. So now, close the sketch. I'm going to change this to 30. See? And that works. So whether you want to do it by alias or whether you want to do it by the column number, it should always work. Now, if I click here and I insert a row, it will shift all my dimensions down. So this used to be B2, but now if I go back into my sketch and I select this guy, go here, it will be changed to B3. If I give this guy an alias after the fact, change it to Y, hit enter, change this one to Z, give enter, it will still work because it is still tied to B3. So it doesn't matter whether the alias exists or not. So since we've given it a Z dimension, Let's actually give it a Z. If I click extrude, I will see my length. And on my length dimension, I do see a formula. Clicking on a formula, I could say spreadsheet, click here, dot, and I can either use capital Z or I can say before. 
I prefer the aliases whenever possible. And now I'm just gonna click OK and look at that. Just like with the 2D view, if I change the size of this, I can see it update right away. So let's say that this piece is a lid. So we'll make this really small, like let's say five millimeters. And in here, I want a screw hole in a center. Well, I'm just gonna create an object called a screw hole. And I'm just gonna copy it here, add it there, call it a screw hole, hit enter. I want an offset, so I'm gonna say offset. So I'm gonna give our offset an alias of offset. And there is another way you can add an alias. If you right click here and go to properties, you can go to alias and you can paste it there and click okay. So back in our screw hole here, I can just say equals four millimeters, assuming that's the size of my screw. And I wanna add a little bit of buffer room. So I'm gonna add offset. Because this is zero, it's hard to tell. So let's just change this to 0.15 one five which is a pretty common offset for when you're doing 3d prints and you'll see it'll update right here of course i could always go b5 and that would work too so now i can click here and i'm going to make a sketch put it right into the middle here click and now i want to give it a diameter so i'm going to constrain by diameter click it there click here and i'm going to say spreadsheet dot and screw hole i'll close this up and you know what let's just extrude it here real quick just so it looks cool through all and there's my design so i've printed this file it works and you know what i give it to you and your printer well let's just say maybe it over extrudes maybe it under extrudes so the hole's either too big or too small i could just tell you open up the spreadsheet and you know what, change your offset. So let's say it was a little too tight. I'll just change it to 0.25. And right away, this hole increased in size. So now you don't have to know how to model, but you can still effectively change what I've provided for you. It's like universal compatibility. It is pretty cool. What did you think of that tutorial? There's still more to cover. So leave me a comment below if you wanna see more on spreadsheets. At the same time, let me know if you're gonna use the feature. I think it's a good one, but you know, I might just be a Canadian weirdo. Anyways, I got a really good drink on a go here, guys. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this while I watch The Witcher, but not before I ask you to scotch scribe, and of course, drink to your good health. Nazdrovia. Oh.